In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a Baco.NET Core Mastery. Now, I'm going to start off with a slight disclaimer, and that is I wrote the book. However, I promise to give you a completely unbiased opinion about this book. So as I'm going through reviewing literally the best book ever written in the whole of humanity, completely unbiased, what you'll see is what's included in the book, all the different chapters, what the code samples look like, so you can make your own mind up if it's something of interest to you, and it's going to cost you 15 bucks. Now, for those of you who've been following my channel, and I call you legends, you might have noticed that in the last year, there's been a lot of Umbraco content on this channel. And the main reason is I've been writing a book, and there's only so much I can do in a week. I've got a baby, I've got a job, I do YouTube videos, I've also got another business. So when I'm writing a book, the only thing that I can really record videos about is the thing that I'm writing about. So now my book is finished, I'm actually struggling for ideas of what to do on this channel. So I'm even considering, should this be the end of the channel? Now, if you want to know the answer to that, carry on watching to the end to find out. If this is the first time that you've come across my channel, then my name is John, and I typically release new videos every Sunday on Umbraco, web development, that kind of stuff. So if that sounds good to you, what I recommend you do is smash on the subscribe button and then click on the like button to help me with the YouTube algorithm. And as a reward, I'm going to show you an insight into what it's like to be an author. Yes, waking up at 5am in the morning sucks. I know your first thought must be, how can I buy this book right now? So it's a self-published book and it's available on leanapub.com. If you just search for Umbraco Mastery Book, it will pop up. And as you can see, there's a minimum price of $12.50. However, if you want to do me a solid, I recommend you give me 20 bucks. If you really want to go wild, you can give me all the way up to 40. And actually there's about four or five people who have, and they are absolute legends. So what you get for the book is you can download it in either an EPUB, a MOBI, or a PDF, whatever floats your boat. And as you can see on the page here, you can see all the chapters and all the different topics that you're going to get in the book. On the screen in front of us, you can see a PDF version of the book. Now, one of the nice things about LeanPub is that you can always download this book regardless. Now, even though the book says it's 100% complete, there's a very high likelihood, like my previous books, that if someone emails me and asks me for a little bit more detail, if someone spots a typo, or if, say, Umbraco 10.7 comes out with a new property type, they'll update the book and push it out. It doesn't really take me too long to do updates, so you get all of that goodness now and forever. Now, in terms of actually what you get, as you can see here, the book is 351 pages. This is the reason why it took me eight months of waking up every day at five o'clock in the morning. Now, as we go through, some things which are worth pointing out is that for each chapter, you're going to get further reading. So there's going to be resources to my YouTube channel, the Umbraco Docs, other blog posts to help you gain extra knowledge. Now, as we're going through the process, you will see that there's code samples and screenshots throughout. So if I say, this is how you should do something within the editor, there's also a handy screenshot and there's detailed steps on everything you need to perform. As you would expect, this isn't just a content editor's guide. Throughout the book, whenever there's anything to do with code, there's also going to be a code sample that you can copy and paste. And the way that I've done code samples means they're going to be formatted really nice, regardless of which format you download and want to look at it. And Going through the book, you can see that there's loads and loads of code samples throughout the book. Now, if we scroll this to the left a bit, what we'll see is the index. And I'll give you a quick breakdown of everything you'll get in the book. So I should imagine chapter one is how do you install the CMS? So I'm going to go through all the steps for Umbraco 9 and 10. These steps are also going to work for Umbraco 11, 12, 13, moving forward as well. So this is .NET Core, and there is some bits in there about the differences between ASP.NET 5 and ASP.NET 6. I'm going to show you how to set up a website with IS and Docker, and I'm also going to give you the recommendation of which is the best way, which is going to make your life much easier. Now, after we've actually set everything up, we're going to look at content modeling, so how we can take a design and get that design and wireframe and turn it into Umbraco components. So you're going to learn about all the different tools you have available 
to do that process. Now, after we've actually designed our site, the next step is to start building pages. So we're gonna go through and look at controllers and all the different controllers that Umbraco give you, the view models and how we can structure them, views, that kind of stuff. Now, creating a single web page is brilliant. We also need to know about the Umbraco APIs so we can start querying the CMS to get different data so we can do things like the menu, search, all of that kind of good stuff. So that's covered next. Then after that, we've got how to hook and hack into the Umbraco request pipeline. So maybe you want to change some default behavior in Braco. Maybe you want to do some routing rules. Maybe you want to do some redirects. All of that stuff covered there. Now, after that, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can customize the back end. So if you want to make the back end screens different, if you want to add in a custom tree section, a content app, all of that stuff's there, including all the security around it. Now, next up, I'm going to show you how you can build a members area. So login components, log people out, all of that kind of stuff, and what you need to do in the CMS to lock everything down. I'm also going to show you the same for content editors. However, if I'm honest, you're probably less likely to need content editing management. After that, we're going to look at multi-language sites. So if you've got an English site, a French site, and a German site, how can we build that? This is also going to cover microsites. So maybe you need to have eight different websites in a single Umbraco instance, all of that's in there. And then finally, we're going to look at good practices or the chapter that I like to call MISC. So in the MISC chapter, we're going to look at how you can upgrade from framework to core and plan it all out. We're also going to look at how you can upgrade from V9 to V10 because V10 is a LTS support. We're also going to look at performance. So if you are going from a migration from framework to core, unfortunately, you're going to have to completely redo all your performance tweaks. So I go into everything you need to know in order to make your pages load quickly. So as you can see, it's taken me eight months. There's a lot of good stuff in here. And if you're looking to learn Umbraco, or maybe you're an Umbraco Pro, but you're just not that quite good with .NET Core yet, there's definitely going to be something in here that you're going to get value from. Pinky promise. As I'm hoping that I'm sharing this video, I definitely put a lot of time and effort into this book. Waking up at 5am in the morning with a baby and work does take a lot of effort. And anyone who tries writing a book will know it's a pain in the ass. However, out of all the books I've written, and this is number three, I think this is way better than the other books. I've definitely got my process of how to create much better honed so hopefully the quality and the writing should be better and i also think that this book is more focused on actually how to solve your problem in umbraco and let's be honest if you are looking for a resource or a book on umbraco v9 and 10 this is literally the only one so niche market right now joking aside that kind of leads us on to the next topic what am i going to do with this channel it's time in the video to talk about the future of this channel and this is a bit unlike other videos where it's probably time to get a bit more serious. So I started this channel maybe about three or four years ago, had a stupid camera, I just talked into it and the early videos of this channel, they're terrible. I still leave them up there, but they do make me cringe. I had no idea what I was doing. I was listening to a podcast and said, yeah, you should promote YouTube videos it'll make you a legend. So I did. The only intention at the beginning was to get hundred subscribers. And if you see those videos, and if you were one of those original 100 subscribers, then you are a legend because this channel would not have carried on for this long if people hadn't subscribed. Then, yeah, the original intention, I guess, was for me to just promote myself a little bit. So if I was doing contracting work or if I was looking for work, it would make life a little bit easier because I could go, hey, you know, check out my website, check out some of my code and check out some of my videos. I know what I'm talking about. And let's be honest, it does help. And when I started the channel, I had some aspirations of maybe I wanted to cover how to build stuff with EpiServer, how to do stuff in Optimizely, maybe how to get into headless CMS development just so I could learn at the same time as actually building stuff. And all those original aspirations have now been ticked with the finish of my book. I've been planning on writing books for ages. So combining the channel, Having to do weekly topics with writing has definitely helped me get there. But now the book is finished. Now I feel like I've covered all the topics I wanted to. The question is, what is next? 
and I generally just don't have an answer to this. Obviously, if I'm going to keep going with this channel, keep doing the weekly YouTube videos, I need it to get bigger. So I need growth. And if I just carry on doing YouTube videos on, on Braco, there's only a limited market. And if I'm going to carry on, I also need to get a bit better in my production quality, I think. So I have that annoying little clicking thing which goes on, which I spend so long trying to figure out, still can't. If I want to start recording with a better camera, I need an 8K camera. So it's going to cost me about 4K to buy the Mac so I can edit it. It's going to cost me about 4K to do the camera. There's other equipment I need to buy, which is going to cost me anything. And obviously, it takes me a load of time and effort. Also need to learn how to become better at videos. So there's a big time commitment for me to do this channel. I've also got a baby. I'm also doing a complete house renovation. So I've got 10 rooms to do. I'm about halfway through. I've also got a job. And I also carry on writing blog posts on my website. Now, the only reason why I do it is a genuine thing is to help people out there, share some knowledge. I'm not a millionaire out of this. I don't make loads of money. So to carry on, obviously I need to get bigger and better. And this is where I'm not really sure where I can add value to the world. Now, I can definitely teach people how to do programming 101. So how do we do C Sharp? What's new in C Sharp 10? How do we do design patterns? How can we apply those design patterns? I can also do the same when it comes to JavaScript and React. So complete courses from zero to hero and how to build stuff. Another idea I've been floating about is how to do game development in JavaScript or maybe C Sharp. And that's a whole series of how to do things like build battleships or Snake or Pong. I'm not the best of it. However, I'll be able to give good videos on how to do that. So this is, guess, my question back to you guys. Like, if it wasn't for everyone who subscribed and carried to watch, this channel would have been dead in the water ages ago. So I definitely do appreciate all the support because it's the only thing which keeps me doing these videos. However, moving forward, do you think I should just give up now because I'm very annoying? Or do you think I should do one of those topics I've covered? Or is there a whole series of topics that you think I should start looking into? And this is where I need your help. So if you'd like this channel to continue on a weekly basis, please let me know your thoughts. The sign out is going to be slightly different this week. Again, thank you for all of you who support this channel. If you do want to click on subscribe and like, then I would appreciate it. I may see you in the future. There's definitely going to be a few more videos, but who knows? Anyway, I hope you got value from this video and happy coding.